We're going to greet everyone with the peace of the Lord. Let's open our Bibles in the book of Joshua. Joshua 1, verses 7 and 8. Let's follow together. Joshua, Joshua first, verse 7 and 8. Amen. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Amen? My brethren, we see here the servant Joshua, young man Joshua, with one very challenging moment in his life. We know very well that Joshua, he was very close to Moses, and he saw what God had done through the life of Moses. And here in this period, we see the Hebrew people, the people of the Lord, they had left Egypt. They were growing through a very delicate period, a period after 40 years in the desert, and now the situation got a little more complicated because Moses had just died, and Moses was a great man of God, a servant chosen by the Lord, prepared by God instructed by God to guide the people as they departed Egypt, departed from Egypt. And it was something wonderful that we all know. We don't need here to get into details, but we all know very well what happened in the period of the ministry of Moses. And now Moses departs and the people in the desert, they are about to enter. They only needed to cross the Jordan River, and then they would be there on the Promised Land, on the Cana. And now they, with the departure of Moses, what now? Who is going now to lead the end of this journey? So then the Lord appoints Joshua to conduct the people on this last phase of the journey. It was a new phase, a new phase in the life of Joshua that was beginning. What happened in the past ha was past was served as blessing, served as a teaching for that moment, but now Joshua needed to have from the Lord one thing is for you to observe. One thing is for you to see people being worked on by God. One thing is for you to see the miracles of God. One thing is for you to see the operation of God. God using other vessels, other people. But now, it is something different when you have to put, take on the position and Embrace your call and allow God to conduct your own life. And that was the great challenge of Joshua. 
to be a leader, to be now a person that would call the name of the Lord to remain and the service to the Lord, the fellowship with God, everything that the Lord had instructed, everything that the Lord had done should not be left behind that didn't crumble or disappear from the life of the people. But now Joshua needed uh, need a, an encouragement. Joshua needed uh, an, an, a power from the Lord so that the people would know that he was a person chosen by God. And God does this to Joshua. And if you see from the verse 1, on, on chapter 1, you see that the Lord now prepares Joshua and gives to Joshua those instructions that we just read here. The Lord speaks exactly. Joshua, in order for you to be successful, in order for my people to be successful wherever they go, There is one thing you need to do to keep my word. And you will be honored by God. My brethren, this was the great the great secret in the life of Joshua. This instruction from the Lord, this word from the Lord to Joshua, this promise that if Joshua preserved the advices of the Lord, if Joshua put in practice what God was teaching, what God was doing, God would prosper the nation of Israel. And my brethren, the concern of God, the concern of the Lord is exactly this. It is that we should preserve and that we would give great worth and that we may keep the Word of God because the Word of God is everything for us. The Word of God in the Bible here that we have, the doctrine is the life that we need and it we will be able to find everything. The Word of God is sufficient for us because the Bible says the faith comes from hearing and hearing the Word of God. That's why the Lord here, the first thing that the Lord speaks with Joshua, Joshua, keep my word. Do not forget my word. Isn't it true? And we will see, my brethren, I like the brethren to open the Bible once again in Revelations. Revelation. Revelation 1, verse 3. Revelation 1 3. Yes, Revelation 1 3. I'm going to make mention of a single verse here. It says the following Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it, for the time is near. My brethren, so here we see the Lord speaking in Revelations. The Lord says, Blessed are you who keeps the words of this prophecy. And it is interesting that the word blessed or being blessed, if you read on the dictionary in Portuguese, blessed is, is a person that is happy. A person that is very happy. And it is interesting that in the Greek dictionary, there are two ways for we, for us to say this. Happiness and being blessed. There are different things in the Greek dictionary. Why is that? Because for the Greek, happiness was something that something good happens. If you're happy, it's because something happy, uh, something good happened. Oh, I got a job or I bought a car was able to buy a house. Isn't it true? Well, I was sick, and now the Lord healed me. I'm happy because of this. But the word, the true meaning of the word being blessed, 
when a person is blessed here on the Greek, on the word, it has a different meaning. It's a happiness that it is it is independent on any circumstance. If you are happy independently of what you are going through, you see an example. I'm sick. I'm about to die. Glory to God. The Lord is with me. Isn't it true? Oh, I lost a job. I lost my job. But the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That's what it is to be blessed. It is to trust that the Lord is in control of everything. Blessed here, this word that is here in the book of Revelations is exactly this. It's for you to know that we are servant of a God that can do all things. Isn't it true? It is a God that we know that our Lord and that is above all, all things. Because in the moment in which you're living, it's exactly this, the moment of the last hour. In this moment, in this moment, the Lord wants to give us an alert for the importance of us to keep His Word in our hearts. Because if we do like that, if we keep the Word of the Lord, the doctrine of the Lord in our hearts, we will be blessed. And that's what we, we are seeing here. And the Lord promised Joshua exactly this. Do not come out of your mouth the book of the law. The Bible is, is our manual. It's everything for us. The Bible says that our, our lips, they speak what our hearts is filled with, what comes out of our lips, our words, the, the word that are inside of our hearts, what our hearts is filled with. And that's why the Lord spoke to Joshua. The advice of the Lord to Joshua is exactly this. Because when we are, we have our hearts filled with the word of God, filled with the advices of the Lord, filled with the promises of the Lord. Nothing will affect our spiritual life. Nothing will steal our fellowship. Nothing will break our fellowship because when we are meditating on the Word of God, our heart is being fed. Our bones, our doctrine, our bodies are being strengthened. And we will have then the ability to proclaim what is eternal. Because the, the life that we have in the Lord is an eternal life. So then the Lord says to Joshua, This book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth. So, my brethren, the faithful church of the Lord should always be testifying of the operation of the Lord in our lives. Independent on what we are going through, independent of the moment in which we are, we, are. we have a God that is strong. Of, we have a God that is powerful. We have a God that can do all things on behalf of His servants. And it says also, But you shall meditate in it day and night so that you may do according to everything that is written in it. My brethren, our fellowship with the Lord, our spiritual life has to be day and night because it is the moment of the church. We leave this moment. Is the period of the church on the face of the earth. We learn in the book of Songs that we we live this exactly this period, the period of the day and the period of the night. Why? Because it is a moment to speak of, of the blessings and the trials. The church will always go through this moment, the period of trials and the blessings, the moment of difficulty and the moment of the deliverance. The church needs to leave this. Why? Because the Lord always well, we'll always face the trial, but the Lord will always give us the victory. The Word says, The tears may last an entire night, but the morning always comes in the morning. Amen? And the Word says, Meditate 
meditate in it day and night. My brother, this word meditate is not simply you read the Bible in recklessly or in haste or reading the Bible because you are there, you need you need to read because otherwise uh, I'm not going to be able if somebody asks if if I'm reading the Bible, I won't be able to say that I am. The Bible, meditate is, what is to meditate? Is to reflect, is to take into consideration, is to read the Word of God and for you to, to, to ponder on the Word. Is for you to absorb the Word. And we are thinking about it. Oh, I'm going to put this in practice in my life. I cannot cancel this text of the word. I cannot uh, cancel this advice of the Lord for my life. Oh, oh, this is going to hurt me on my flesh. Exactly. That's what it is to meditate in the word. That's what it is for you to leave off of, off of the word. Because when you are meditating on a word, you are able to reach the secrets of the Holy Spirit. You are reaching the secrets there are contained in the Word. And this is the guarantee of a life in the dependency of the Lord, a life of faithfulness of the Lord, a life of, where, that you renou deny yourself is a promise of the Lord, promise of the Lord for the life they are meditating, the lives they are putting in practice the advices of the Lord. And what the Lord says to us is exactly for this. So that's why the Lord speaks with us, so that we may live in allowing the Lord to act in our lives. When you are reading the Word, you, when you are meditating on the Word, we, when you ponder on the Word, the Holy Spirit is working and adding faith to your heart. He's working inside of you. He's working on your ego on your human reason, on everything that comes from man. That's what the Lord said to Moses. Moses, meditate, uh, Joshua. Joshua, meditate day and night. This is the promise of the Lord for the ones who are meditating. Because God is going to cause you to prosper on your ways. The prosperity here is not the prosperity that many preach out there. The prosperity that the Lord spoke to Moses, to Joshua, and now that the Lord is speaking to our lives in this service here is exactly the prosperity, not on the as in the uh, material aspect or on your secular life. No, it is not that the Lord does not care about this. Of course, especially is ex an example of this as the Lord is giving us health, He's opening the doors, He's honoring everything that we are doing. We are able to uh, be paying or, or have been honoring our commitments, but what the Lord wants to speak with us is you know, on the spiritual aspect, because the Joshua is going to have great experience, and the people are, were going to have great experience with the Lord, and in the same way, we're having great experiences in our secular life, in our spiritual life, and why is that? Because we are living according to the revelation of the Lord, according to the revelation that is contained in the Word. So the prosperity here in, in the walk is related to the aspect that we should not go astray from what is the Word of God. So when we are, when we have our lives completely geared towards the Lord, having the eternity as our objective and the things of the Lord in the first place in our lives, the Lord will honor everything that we have. Firstly, the spiritual life. The Lord is going to give us experiences. He will confirm our call. He will confirm your call so that you can be an instrumentalist or a servant of God or to be a deacon or to be an usher or to be a pastor. The Lord will confirm why is that? Because you are keeping what is the eternity. You are keeping what is the will of the Lord. And everything else will be added unto you. Amen. 
for then you will make your your, your way prosperous and then you will have good success and this song that we just sang here the songs that we sang they were very helpful in the preparation of the war because the song of the children speaks speak about happiness and the song that we just sang wherever you go my brand we're leaving a moment we're beginning now a new year isn't it true we're beginning a new phase in your life in the life of the church like we like here we can compare like the new phase in the life of Joshua and now how are we going to face this year we went through a difficult moment 2020 the pandemic it continues into 2021 what can we expect from this year my brother and sister prudently the Lord will guide you because if you are in the spirit if you are keeping the word of God if you are giving worth to what is in the Word of God, the Lord will guide your life. And you will end this year being victorious in the presence of the Lord. Because this is the promise of the Lord. Isn't it true? Joshua was able to reach the favor of the Lord and he was victorious. Joshua Joshua was a, a servant of the Holy Spirit and we see signs and if we follow the life of Joshua and what God has done through the life of Joshua we see that truly the Lord has the best for us God has the best for us isn't it true and we live a moment in which our our, our happiness everything that we have needs to be independent on what we're going through today why is it why is that because if you look to the circumstance that are out there surrounding us what the world is going through today how are we going to be happy how are you going to be able to have joy in your life you go to the street you're afraid of going back you don't know if you're going to come back home with the disease or you don't know if you receive someone into your house if you don't know if this person is carrying a disease i don't know if you go to work if you're going to return the same way your children it's complicated we are living this world and in this situation the world is going through difficult moments we are having difficult moments infirmity unemployment crisis that's what we see in the world the love of many growing colder and others living off of the gospel, uh, gospel that is just uh, social, in the, or off of appearances, with no closeness to, to the Lord, with no closeness with what is eternal life with God. And that's what we see up there. But we are living a moment as a church, church, body of Christ, where the Lord is preparing us, where the Lord is causing us to wait for the moment of the time called soon. How do we live this? With our heads held high, held high, because the Lord is the one who is guiding all things. And the Lord is this year still. He will guide us and we will be blessed because the word of the Lord is being given proper worth in our midst, in a church, as the body of Christ. And the advice of the Lord for you tonight is that you that the gaps, that the flaws, the spiritual coldness may be undone. And that everything that separates us many times from the fellowship with the Lord may be undone at this moment. We need to have the word of the Lord kept in our hearts. So tonight, the advice of the Lord is we need to read. We need to meditate hear and keep the word of God because if we do this we will be blessed we will be happy because the word of the Lord the hands of the Lord will continue to be laying upon us and whatever might come the pandemic or other virus whatever might come the word is out there walking like this because the signs are upon the world the judgment of the Lord is upon the world. We will not have anymore any 
way for us to be dependent on the world. The, no, the faithful church needs to live on the dependency of the Holy Spirit. And tonight the Lord wants us to have this. Joshua, he sought from the Lord. The word and advice of the Lord was this. So that we, so and the, the advice of the Lord for us, for our lives is exactly the same. Keep my word. Meditate on my word. And I will give you prosperity, spiritual prosperity. Because what controls everything is the spiritual. The spiritual has to control the material, not the other way around. And if you have a spiritual life with a spiritual level, high, up there, everything else will be on the hands of the Lord. And the Lord will continue to bless us. Amen. So here is the word from the part of the Lord for our lives, so that we may always being give, giving great worth to what the Lord, what we have received from the Lord, and that there always may be in us a gratitude, and from our lips may always come words of praise to our God. Now let us sing a song. Glory to God. We're going to have a word of adoration to the Lord. Lord, we praise your name. We're a wonderful God. 
you are God that truly has rescued us from the servitude. We are eternally thankful to you, Lord, for this, because one day we were in this evil world, in the mud of, of sin, and you rescued us and placed us in your presence. And for us, Lord, there is nothing better, Lord. We praise you, we thank you, and we say, Lord, that it is our pleasure to serve you, Lord, with all our heart. Receive, Lord, our gratitude in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. My brethren, the, the Lord has show, given us three gifts, spiritual gifts to the service. I'm going to read the, the gift literally, and then we're going to explain. The Lord was showing a sword that came from eternity. And this word came towards uh, the home of a servant who is in the service tonight. And this this brother, his heart was completely frozen. The sword would come from eternity and would touch, would penetrate into his body and was able to reach his heart. And what that happened, this touch, the heart of this man would stop, uh, start a thawing and the life would just take a hold of the life of this man once again. And this is the text that we just read, giving worth to the to Word of God, because the Word of the Lord is what connects men to God, the advice of the Lord, the doctrine, that's what strengthens men. They give us faith. So if we are canceling the Word of God, we are dying spiritually. Then, then spiritual coldness comes, and then freezing comes of your heart, and then complete the departure from the eternity and the presence of the, of the Lord. So now, the Lord tonight, the Lord is giving this man a new opportunity. My brother, gives worth to this opportunity. Don't waste time. Meditate on the Word of God. Re set aside a minute, 10, 20 minutes, whatever you can. But put this advice of the Lord, the same advice that the Lord gave to Joshua. Put it on your life to, from this day forward. And you will see how we will be victorious in the presence of the Lord. Amen. The Lord also gave another spiritual gift. The Lord was showing four vessels of clay. And those vessels was seen. Very small cracks. And these cracks, they could only be seen if you were very close. Because when we came close, you see there was a loss of what was inside of this va those vessels, which was water. Through the cracks, you could see from outside the water coming out from those vessels. And that's what it is. The loss of the blessing of the Holy Spirit. So what you need, four vessels, four people. We don't know if there are two women, two men. We don't know. Here, the vision does not make it clear who those people are. But look, what gaps are those? Maybe it's something small, something that you think is doesn't matter, something that nobody's seeing. But look, the Lord is seeing it because it's causing loss, loss of fellowship. You're breaking the fellowship. You are canceling the action of the, whole, of the Lord in your life. So if the Holy Spirit is testifying your heart now, it's exactly this. That's what it is. What the Lord has just spoken to you in the trans as we were speaking about the gift. The Holy Spirit already spoken to you, and this is the voice of the Lord. This is the voice of the Lord. Uh, whatever it might be, small or big, if the Lord is showing this, it's because the Lord loves your life, because the Lord wants to give you, allow you to hold on to your blessing and to have the ability to receive the blessing and keeping the blessing of the Lord in your life. Amen? Uh, another gift the Lord was showing that... Uh, the head of a household, and this is a concerning gift. The head of a household was getting ready to run away together with their family members. 
and they would grab everything that apparently they thought that they would need on this on this journey as they were running away but they didn't have a plan of escape but they would go through an unknown road and it was a road that was not finished and this would cause the death of the everyone in the of a member of the family but during the service tonight a large hand would remove this family from that trajectory placing them back to their home in safety my brethren the path is one alone the path is jesus we have only one path and our trajectory is from here towards eternity there's no other way there is no why you didn't have a, a route of escape. You, you know why? Because there is no other. There is only one way. There is only Jesus in order for you to receive a blessing, in order for you to achieve your eternity. The path was already given to you, given to us, in the moment in which Jesus died on the cross. The moment of in which the veil from, was ripped from top to bottom. That's where we were able to have your eternity. So don't do this. Independent what is the circumstance that you're going through, do not abandon the Lord. Don't do this. Because you may be bringing you and your family to a complete um, distancing from the Lord and living an eternity away from the Lord. And you don't want this. The Lord doesn't want this for our life. That's why the Lord is giving to us here this sign, this gift, so that you may let go of this thought and that you may let go of this thought that is not from the Lord and that you may live, continue, continue, to, continue to live in the presence of the Lord. Forget about man. Forget about man's flaws. And forget about this and only look towards the Lord. Amen. Let's pray, bring the service a close. And soon after, the brand that needed an assistance, we are making ourselves available to pray for the brand. We had today a day, very, very busy day with the seminar. It was a blessing. Beginner's class is always a blessing. Amen. When we think that we have already seen everything, oh, beginner's, beginner's class, oh, then you see that the Lord always has something new for us. Because the blessings of the Lord, they renew. That's why salvation is dynamic. Salvation is dynamic every day. There is always something new that the Lord has for us. Amen. So let's pray. Let the brethren to close their eyes. And let's pray, bring this, delivering this service to the author of the Lord. Lord, we praise your name for this night, in your, for this day in your presence, beginning in the morning with the early dawn what you were able to hear our prayers. And during the day, Lord, during that seminar, once again, Lord, your word was delivered. Your teaching was given to us and your Holy Spirit had the opportunity to put a stamp on that teaching and the word, the revelations of the Lord. And now we ask, Lord, that in this service, you also receive our gratitude to, to you, our expression of our praise to you for everything that you have done and that you continue to do in our lives. Receive our adoration, Lord, and give us a night in your presence so that we may be visited with dreams. Lord, dreams that may give us direction for the ones who need direction that bring comfort to the ones who need comfort and to bring security for the ones who need security. Visit, Lord, our homes. Visit our lives tonight and give us a blessing. Receive our adoration. Is a prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. Amen. And in your name we say, Lord, the, uh, the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations and the gifts of the Holy Spirit be poured upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen.
Amen. My brother, peace of the Lord. Tomorrow at 8 o'clock in the morning, we have our Sunday school. And later on, 7.30 p.m., our evangelistic service. We ask the brethren to invite people to participate through Zoom or those who can to watch it through YouTube on the channel of the church. And to all the peace of the Lord. Senhor, 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 Senhor,